Greetings YouTube and welcome to my next uh, weapons build. Now, uh, the last build I did was the um, the Tiger Shield, which may be slightly mis of a misnomer, but I don't know. But I think it's a cool name anyway, so that's what I'm going to call it. And I showed a picture to a coworker of mine, and he said that you know you should have two points in the front, and I'm like I didn't want to redo a whole thing like that. So I thought, okay, maybe I can make something that's a smaller scale that kind of does that. And I had firstly was going to call it like a serpent's, the serpent's uh, kiss, but he just suggested a viper's kiss because when I described it to him, he said, you know, it does sound like a horned viper. So this is the plan. This section, this trapezoid of diamond plate is going to be cut out. Uh, I'm only going to need two cuts, cut off this thin piece then cut it here. And then the piece comes free. Um, I haven't figured out how I'm going to do this yet because my angle grinder works very poorly on this stuff. It's it just the, the abrasive wheels just with the thicker stuff, it just melts it. It doesn't cut it so much as it just melts its way through and it's horrible and it makes a very difficult, long, uh, unpleasant cutting process. And my reciprocating saw blade on my saber saw does an excellent job. Unfortunately, because it's a reciprocating blade and this stuff is thin and flexible, it vibrates like you will not believe it's very, very stressful to cut. So yeah, not a lot of fun. Um, so I'm going to figure out if I may have another option other than like using a hacksaw, which would, you know, take me years to cut that, cut, cut a slot that big. Um, so the, cut the trapezoid and I'm going to use this type of angle iron, the same angle iron, iron, angle iron I used in the Tiger Shield. Um, and this is actually the last piece left over from the previous. And I will think I think I'll actually be able to use a piece of this because there's going to be a piece in the front, like this, the narrow uh, width up, and the, this broad down, and that is going to be both the knuckle guard and as well as a point where I'm going to put I think two pieces of threaded rod with spikes on them just for fun to kind of represent the viper's smaller teeth. Whereas I'm going to put two more five-inch points on two sections and have them go here, so the points will begin there and go outward. Um, so I need to make sure I cut these things to the right length so I make sure that the piece I cut is going to be from the inside of, the, so if I have it like this, I gotta make sure I have that point here as the length and not this, because this is going to be, it'll be overhanging and then I'll cut it flush so the end will not be, won't, won't be perpendicular in this way, it'll be flush with the, uh, with the diamond plate. Uh, this is the belt I'm gonna try using. I, I picked it up at a yard sale for a buck. It's got holes already in it, which should make uh, mounting it uh, with quarter 20 rivets easier. We'll see if I can use this. And if I can't, I'll just go get another belt somewhere else. I may ha I may even have one kicking around in my supplies. I'll have to check. Um, the back is gonna have no support on it. I don't think it's gonna need it. The two pieces of steel on either side, and the plate in the front. This is going to be the grip on the inside and then the belt will go here on the inside. Obviously the diamond plate's gonna go out. Now on the back of this, I am going to create two blades and I'm gonna cut it from, where did I get that? I think from here to there, I think if I go from that point to the corner, I get the hole in there, but if I go from, yeah, if I go from this corner, along there to the point, I get no holes. You just get a solid piece of metal. And I will have to cut this off to narrow it up. And then I'm gonna space them probably like that, kind of representing the hooded eye ridge of a pit viper. There's a, there's a hooded pit viper. Um, I, I can't remember where it is. I've seen pictures of them. Um, also you have horny toads, uh, which is a type of lizard, oddly. They also have a hooded it's kind of a spiked uh, eye ridge, and that's gonna be kind of what I'm emulating with this. And those will be sharpened both on the front and on the slope, and they'll be facing that way, which will allow for a cutting motion that way and a backhand cut as well. Um, and also, I like, I like the aesthetic of the high point here and the low point there. So some of this is pure, uh, uh, pure personal opinion. Because these will be cut off, I will make sure that they're wide enough to get my uh, 
much the world looking for, pop, pop rivet gun in here because I've encountered it as a problem in the past, trying to get the pop rivet gun into a too small a place. So I may have to make them just on the outside edge of that. Cut it like that. I'll see if I can get that in there with a one inch gap, but that's about what that is, about roughly one inch. Um, so I'll see how it fits and if I can get it to work. If I can't, I'll have to come up with uh, a slightly dim. I don't want to have to, and if, I, if I can't do it that way, I will make them narrower and then I'll screw them in place with, with, with nuts and bolts. So I would rather have that be the interior than have me to have to have the pop rivet come from the inside out because that would be ugly with the with the, the bottom of the pop rivet on the outside. If I can't get a nice clean flush, I'll just put the top head of a slotted screw on the outside will will look better. And on the inside, you'll just have nuts, which you won't really see because they're going to be in the inside. Um, so that's the project. So the first thing I need to do is figure out how to make these two cuts in the cleanest, least vibratory manner. Because the last time I cut had to cut diamond plate with my reciprocating saw, it was very stressful, very long, very noisy, very unpleasant. Alrighty, so now to go look at my options. I may have a solution. This is a tack life circular saw. I got this with my tax return. My wife said we both could get something for fun. I ordered this and some masks for work, which aren't fun, but they're the Tommy copper gaiters, which have a double layer cloth, nose piece, and an elastic. They're infused with copper, which is bull, but um, they're very comfortable. They, aren't, they don't put any strain on my ears. I can wear them all day long. And if, when you don't want to use them, you just pull them off your face and then you can't lose them. Um, they're awesome. Um, but I got those masks and I got this for myself. I did, did, did a little searching online. Uh, I discovered that this was very well reviewed. Um, if I wanted to get one that was like really superior quality, this I'd have to go into like a battery operated one. And since I have no idea if this particular type of saw is going to be of use to me. I don't, I've never used it. This is a brand new blade. Brand new blade. It's designed to cut wood and or metal. It is 60 teeth, 60 teeth 3 8 inch uh, diameter, arbor. Um, designed just for this type of saw. This is an entire class of four and a half inch circular saw blade saws. Um, these are not the same as the blades that are used on angle grinders, which are also four and a half inches. Well, the most common size of angle grinders, four and a half inches. These are not the same. This is much lower RPM. I think this thing runs at 3,500 RPM, whereas the angle grinder is like 13,000 RPM or something like that. It's really high. Um, so this is supposed to cut, cut metal. This is aluminum, so I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, it uh, has a laser built into it. I've never, again, I've never tried this. I can set the angle, so once I get, uh, once I get comfortable with it, how I'm gonna hold it, I'm gonna change this so I get just enough you know, blade sticking out of the bottom to do the cut. I don't need an extra blade just hanging out the bottom. I have bolt, I have clamped this to the bench and I have clamped it to this outrigger, trying to dampen as much vibration as I can. Because again, this is a big flexible piece of metal. It's very annoying. Um, I really don't have the clamping ability that I would like to have for cutting stuff like this, this kind of flexible light material. And it didn't work well with my reciprocating saw because of that. So we're going to see how it works here. Well, I've got my apron on. I have not yet put on my safety glasses or my hearing protection, nor my uh, gloves, all of which will be essential before I start doing this. And so this is the first line. And when I get this section cut off, I will reclamp it. And then I will cut this one, which will be easier, I think, because it'll be smaller. And I can get it closer to the table and it should be less vibration. I don't want to try this one first. I think that would be bad. I think getting this piece off will be the simplest process. We're going to find that out. And uh, I'm not going to film it because I have no idea how this is going to go and it could go horribly wrong and I could get mangled. So I don't want that on film. Alrighty, so suit up and give it a try. I'm not dead and I put on the outrigger handle because it made things a lot easier. Oh, I should probably turn the laser off. Is it the laser on? Did the laser on? Can't tell. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Sorry. Um, so, it makes a decent cut. There is a nasty burr, but not as bad as when I was using my angle grinder. Uh, and 
I, I get my first cut, I got pretty close to the line I wanted to get at. I'm sure I'll do better in the second second one. Now I just need to clean that up, deburr it, um, and again, these two cuts and this plate will be in the ready to be used stage. I will have to do nothing else as safe drill holes in it. Um, so, quite like the Tackle Life, it was far less vibration, far more control, it was quieter, it just did an excellent job um, that I asked to do, which was to cut through some light, what is it, eighth inch, yeah, eighth inch uh, uh, diamond plate. So, very pleased. Oh, and for any of you who are asking, I picked up this diamond plate at a yard sale for $2.50 which is awesome for a piece of a diamond plate that's one by, uh, one by, uh, one foot by two feet. Very inexpensive. So, quite happy. Now I can take this thing off, which is very easy, needs no tools, and I can put this away once I'm finished. So, excellent. And it's got a safety built into it. You have to push that to get this. So if you let go, the whole thing stops. Um, this is your blade cover. It's kind of standard. If you've ever used a circular saw blade, you know what those are. Um, and I did get this set up so that it was just just coming out the bottom. Not, there's not a lot of extra blade coming out because I don't need a lot of extra blade coming out. So, quite pleased with this. Now i got to set it back up again so I can do this cut um, and then I'm done with this particular, uh, this particular job. So here we have the major components have been cut. Uh, the diamond plate is all set and the two side rails which will have the, point, have the points on them they're just roughed in. I have not defined them in any way, shape, or form. I haven't deburred this at all. I did deburr this one just because I'm gonna wanna make sure it fits very well so I don't want any burrs to be causing me problems. But that is not gonna be able to receive a final fit until these have been installed because I am going to notch out these corners so this will come in contact or it will be next to this. It won't come in contact with it, but be right next to this so there will be no gap. And this section here will have to be cut at a slight angle to match the angle of this, uh, of this when it's finished. So that cannot be fitted until the end um, when I can cut the notch and I can cut out the, the angle and everything so that it fits uh, this well. So the next task I'm going to have is going to be figuring out how many rivet holes I'm going to want. I'm thinking one, two, three. I think three will do it. I don't think I need more than three. I think three will do it on each side. So I'm going to figure those out, lay those out, um, and we'll have, we can drill those. And I'll be drilling. I'll be doing all the layout from the outside. That's easier for me to visualize it than doing it on the inside. Drilling it on the inside would, would be much easier. But I just use a block of wood and it lay, raises it up, and so I can go ahead and do it. Um, it's just that laying the the, the whole locations out when I'm on the outside makes things much easier for me. But if it makes the drilling slightly more difficult, I'm okay with that. It balances out in my book. Um, so figure out where I want the holes, um, probably an inch in and an inch in from both ends. And then, uh, and that's gonna have to be an inch in from the inside diameter. So that point is gonna be where I'm coming off of because that point's staying here and then the outside will have to be trimmed at the end so this matches this as well there's a number of complex cuts that are involved in here i may i may cut those i may grind them depends on how much i have to remove it may just be a very small quantity but i want everything to line up nice and tidy i i know it's a post-apocalyptic thing but i i still have an aesthetic uh, taste Alrighty, so Let's take some measurements, lay out some holes, and go ahead and drill the three holes in this and the three holes in that. And those will be the only holes I need on these. When that's done, these can be finished up as far as finishing the grinding on the end, chamfering the whole nine yards, and I'll decide if I want how much of an edge I want on each of those. I actually may want to put a slight edge on these things. Because they're going to be more supposed. They're supposed to be fangs, and even though I know fangs don't have edges really, well, they some fangs are teardrop shaped, but the one single edge. Yeah, I know it's probably more than you want to know about fangs. Um, but I may want to put a slight bevel on those. Not quite a true edge, but again, this is not great steel. It wouldn't hold a great edge anyway. Alrighty, so let's lay out some holes. 
And here we have the setup where I'm drilling the holes into the diamond plate itself. So the first one's done and I've pinned it with a bolt. Now I'm going to draw this, drill this one, and I'm using a C clamp to hold it to hold this area nice and tight. And this is down here is just pinning everything kind of in location. Once I get this one done, I'll just slide that one down, and we'll do the last one. And I'm just going to leave two two bolts in this. I don't need to put three, uh, just to keep everything from moving around, because that's the most convenient way to do it. These quarter twenty bolts um, are really really handy for that. They make great clamping devices. So here is the uh, device pinned together, uh, just temporarily. So it's going to go on the arm like this. It's going to come up to probably about there on my hand when I'm done. And uh, the, the grip's going to be around here. Layout's going to have to be, I'm going to have to do some measuring because I have to make sure that the blades I'm putting in the back are not going to come into conflict with the rivets for the handle. So I gotta make sure everything kind of like fits together. This zone right here may be slightly complex when it comes to drilling holes and things. But the thing I have to do next is mount this. So at the moment obviously I can't go any further than that because uh, this is too wide. But it will fit here um, quite nicely. So what I need to do is I need to uh, turn this over, turn it upside down so I can work on the other side, but keep it pinned together because at the moment, you know, this is how it's going to end up eventually. Um, take my measurements, figure out where I want my holes for mounting this here, and then do the same thing for mounting this here as I did with these. But I also have to like figure out where I want the notches and then figure out the angle that the top is going to be. So I can, it's not going to be square when I'm finished. That's not. That's going to have to have the same angle that does there, and I don't know what that angle is. Um, I didn't pick an angle. I picked a measurement, so nine here and six here. So I don't know what that angle is. Uh, if anybody wants to figure it out, go for it. I don't. Uh, so I have to turn this thing over, play around with some stuff, and figure out how I want my notches cut. Because once I get those in, and I can actually get this thing in here, and I have to get it all set it in and fitted then I can go about figure out where I want my holes. So that's going to be the most complex component in this this entire. Uh, it's going to have the most holes in it. It's going to have two in the top and two in the bottom, two in the front rather. It's going to have the most complex angles. This is the one that's probably going to end up getting screwed up at least once. Let's hope not. But so far, so good. I'm liking the way this looks. So I encountered a bit of a conundrum. I don't have an angle gauge small enough to fit in that space. Most of the angle gauges, I get, I've got like three of them. They're all designed for like woodworking and I'm not doing woodworking. So since I didn't find, could, didn't have one, I made one. These are two pieces of scraps from this very project that we're looking at. So I just drilled holes in them and the same location on both of them. And now I have an angle set that's the exact angle that I need to cut on that piece right there. And I have this for the future if I have other things in a tight quarters like this that require me to like be able to quickly clamp on something that is uh, disposable. So literally, I, mean, I probably made this out of scraps and it took me about 10 minutes. Uh, so sometimes if you don't have the tool you need, you make the tool you need. I am really happy with how this came out. This fits perfectly and I got the first two holes done um, so that's gonna go in like that and I'm gonna leave this thing bolted together while I work on those two holes for the rivets because that's going to be uh, much easier for spacing and all that happy horse bucky um, though clamping is going to be a little bit more challenging with everything set, set it like it is so I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I'll clamp this in place and then disassemble the rest. That may be easier. Annoying, but easier. Um, I also need to uh, figure out where I want the two holes. And I gotta be honest, I kinda like the spacing that's there. So I may just transfer that distance right down here. Just figure out what the heck it is and uh, transfer it down here and then put two holes here for my two forward spikes. I don't think that's a bad spacing. Spacing. 
Because let's put it this way. You've got the two big spikes here. They're about 10 inches, a little bit more apart. And the two little ones in here. Yeah, that ain't bad. That ain't bad at all. That'll work. I don't have to make any different d d adjustments. I'll just transfer those over the side and we'll call it good. I love when a plan comes together. So I put the two forward holes in here for the uh, points and I used one of my uh, uh, Blair uh, Roto Bridge, Roto Brooch uh, bits to do that and I'm going to be using uh, this piece of threaded rod to make the points. I haven't quite figured out how long they're going to be yet. I'm thinking probably two, two and a quarter inches long. Uh, the nice thing I like about the threaded rod as opposed to using a bolt, which you know has a head on the end, which is kind of convenient, is that I can put this into a drill, put my angle grinder on my in, in my vise, spin it, and then spin this in the drill, and it makes a really nice conical point on the uh, on the on the point on, on the threaded rod, as opposed to a bolt, which I, it's more difficult to do that because the head of a bolt is much bigger than the shaft of a threaded rod. This is 3 8 that'll fit into my half inch drill bit without a problem. Um, and I'm just going to hold that in place with four bolts, two in the back and two in the front. So that'll be super easy. Um, so I didn't do these yet. I'm tired. Um, I've been down for like three hours and so it's time to take a break. I'll finish, hopefully finish this project up next week. So I still have to make the back blades. I still have to figure out the layout for the blades and the handle. Uh, I get to figure out if that strap's going to work for me, how I want to mount it he down here and in one where particular. I'm thinking somewhere in that zone right there or like that or something like that. We'll figure that out. Um, and you know that that's another three hours of work probably. But uh, yes this is coming together quite nicely. I'm quite happy with it. And when these are done they are going to be nasties all get out. This is going to be a cool looking uh, device when I'm finished. Technically, yes, it's going to be closer to what the traditional Tiger shield looks like than the one I built last time, but it's much smaller. It's more of a, a, a weapon than a, than a shield. It has a shield-like capacity, but it's going to be far more dynamic and um, more damage-like because it's going to have multiple points here, multiple points here, and then the two blades in the back, which both can be used forward and as a backhand uh, attack. So yeah, this is coming along nice. It looks good. I'm quite happy with it and I'm really thrilled that my new uh, saw works as well as it does. Well, it's the next weekend and while I was pondering my build over the last uh, seven days or five days, I guess it's been like I, I worked on. I worked on it for like two days, I think, maybe three last week and I don't remember. Um, occurred to me that this is kind of wide and by being wide it it doesn't have the gracial the graceful look the gracile that's the word i'm looking for gracile appearance i wanted to so i'm thinking okay why don't i just narrow it down i mean these would not have to be changed i would have to drill three new holes but it's just aluminum and i this is with this since this is my guide i, I really don't have any measurements to make for those just take, take two inches off put this on there put it where I want it, clamp it in place, drill, 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 and you're done. So I'm coming down here back to the shop, and then I also realized I would have to make an adjustment to this. I'm not going to change these holes. They're going to stay exactly where they are, nor am I going to change these holes. They're going to stay where they are. But I would have to bring this in an inch and this in an inch. All right? Um, so that makes the two inches. And that still leaves my, my, my two holes, my two... Uh, pointy bits right there. They're going to be a little closer to the edge, but I can live with that. And these would still be functional as the points that I'm going to uh, rivet it to the to the to the unit like this. So, and I could actually probably tighten it up a little more. There's a gap in there. You know, I could probably tighten that up a little by doing this that way. Just measure it, measure the gap, make an adjustment. So take less than than two inch, an inch off each side, and the gap would tighten up. So awesome. That's 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 really cool. And since this is the deck, and since that top part's the part you're going to see, that's the part I want to make look nice. I don't really care if these are touching the inside of this or not, but maybe I can make them get tighter. So I come down here, and I look at my handle, and I've discovered something, that the only place I can put this and rivet this is way the heck out here. So I'm like, well, that's not going to work for me, not work at all. So I'm like, okay, 
what if I just use these? So move it in and then let me flip this puppy up so I can tell you what I'm talking about. And then use this like that. So the so those would become triple duty. They're holding well, the double duty. They're holding the steel and aluminum together and they would be holding the handle together. Awesome. Problem. It's too close. With that piece of angle iron here, there's no room for my hand, let alone the nuts that are going to be holding the spikes that are going to be going this way. So it just, it's not going to work. So I'm like, okay, what the heck am I going to have to do? And there's just nowhere this handle fits comfortably without being some kind of weird, really close to the edge thing. I don't want it really close to the edge thing. So then it occurs to me, what if I drill two new holes on each side? And again, the aluminum is not a big deal, but drill two holes here, but drill them for that, which is the diameter of this going to be the spikes. And I got lots of this stuff. I mean, I literally have like six linear feet of this of this better garage, so I got plenty to play with. And have this be the standoff, and then just use a piece of flat stock, which I've got in my collection. Use a piece of flat stock, and have that be the handle. I won't use this at all. Wrap it with paracord, and you're good to go. I was probably gonna do something like that, or maybe a piece of, put a piece of tubing in there, because of that nice curve in there. It's very convenient for putting a piece of tubing in there to kind of bulk up the, the handle and make it a little more comfortable. But a piece of flat stock with, with paracord is gonna work just as well. So that means I can, since I already have this line, I think the line actually may still be there, um, I can just figure out where I want it, put a 3 8 hole in each side, and I can just use my, uh, Use my um, broaching bit, and then again, drill a hole through this 3 8 which again, it's aluminum, it's not hard to do. And I can make my own handle. This will not get used in this project, but I already have a project that it can be used in. I'm, literally, I have another shield idea I'm playing with at the moment, and I already have the materials to put it together, and I needed a handle anyway, so handle. So that's not gonna go to waste. That would solve the problem. It does mean I have to drill another hole here. Um, I'll figure out where I want it. Um, and I did not deburr the inside of these steel parts, because again, I mean, I'm still in the adjustment stage, but I did succeed in cutting myself while trying out uh, how it fit on my arm, because that burr is, is sharp. Yeah, be careful when you're doing things like that. Uh, I don't have any sleeves down here, and I'm wearing a t-shirt, so yeah, I cut myself. But that's going to tighten this whole thing up. It's still not going to be too narrow. I checked. It'll be still be wide enough for, for, for my arm to fit in there comfortably. This will come together closer. Again, these will be these will be the same distance here, but they'll be a little closer to the other points. And I'm okay with that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about that. So it means changing both of these, changing this, drilling four holes, three quarter inch, and then one three eighths, and then one three eighths on this side. Or whichever side I cut off, um, and then making modification to this just as far as taking an inch off here and an inch off the top angled part. And I still have my angle the device that I made, so I can make the angle exactly what it's supposed to be. It's going to be an exact copy of that, and I can take this gap into account and make it a little tighter. So this job's going to take longer than I thought it was going to, but I think in the end we'll end up with a device that looks lighter faster and will be slightly uh, lighter because it's going to have less aluminum on it. But I don't think this is going to weigh a lot different than that when I'm finished. We'll, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I, I don't know what's gonna, how it's going to go. Now that does mean I'm going to have to see if I have some cap nuts. I don't know if I have any cap nuts. Shoot. I don't know if I have any 3 8 cap nuts left because that would look good on the outside, use 3 8 cap nuts. But if I don't, I'll just use heck nuts. I got lots of those 3 8 hex, hex, hex nuts. I mean, I have literally an entire jar of them. So if I have to, I'll do that on the outside. Um, it'll look a little little clunkier than, than, than the rivets are going to give it an appearance. Oh, they, they can be placeholders until I get cap nuts. Uh, maybe I can go get those tomorrow. Because um, today is Saturday, and I still have Sunday to park, work on this as well. So you have heard me rattle on for like almost eight minutes on this, this segment here. I apologize. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to... Take this apart completely, cut this off an inch, about two inches off this, and then work on this 
and the two B sections and then assemble it all over again and we'll see what it looks like. And I think it's going to end up being a, a more interesting build uh, for the lightness. I think it's just going to look better. It will be narrower, less clunky, um, which is kind of what I want to go for. I want it to look less clunky. Alrighty, so time for a bunch of cutting. And I think I figured out how I want to cut this in a way that it's going to be a nice straight cut, straighter than the cuts I did the first time, because I think I figured out how to do it with a guide. Also, time to change my camera battery. It's taking me a little bit of finagling to pull this off, but the distance between the here and the blade of my new um, tack light saw is 2.444 inches. It's a weird measurement, I know. Um, and if I want to go in to have two inches taken off, that means that this distance has to be 4.444 inches. And it is from here to here and here to here. And so this is actually one of the rails that's going to be part of this, this part of this project. So I'm just using that to, as, as, the, as the guide. And I've got my vise set up, my, my clamp set up in this hole because that keeps it out of the way. And this one down here, um, is, it's gripping the end, which is tapered, which it obviously can't do. So this piece of steel is acting as a flat spot so I can actually grab it and, put, and clamp down. And this is actually going to end up being my grip when I'm finished. Um, this is going to be the piece that I'm going to have to put tapers on it. I'm going to have to drill holes in it and I'm going to have to wrap it. So this is going to end up being my grip when I'm finished. Um, I believe it's exa almost exactly the size I need now with a little bit of, you know, put a little English on it and be fine. So now I can use my, I have to gear up, I don't have any safety gear on. And shoot, I have the wrong shoes on. Oh, it's just the way it is. I'm not going to be doing any real angle cutting, I think, tonight. Today, I'm just going to be doing some this distance, maybe some drilling. I'm going to get too tired. Um, so that's going to be the where I'm going to cut it. So it's going to be right about there. I don't know if you can see that little pencil mark I made on my on my aluminum. Because um, I've actually put the, the, the saw here and made marked off the blade itself so I could then measure the distance. So... I'm very confident about the distance here. Then one straight cut using this as the guide, so this cut should come out nice and straight. You better even straighter than that one. Uh, we're going to find that out in a minute. And then when we're finished, we have to. I have to go then and then start working on the new holes and the new holes, and we'll figure this out. These holes have to be done first um, because I, I have to have the whole thing pinned together so I can then. Uh, make the figure out where I want the holes for the handle to be or where that's going to be comfortable for my arm and hopefully I can be smart enough not to cut myself again because that was that was not that was not too bright of me um, all right so time to make one hopefully smooth seamless cut this was a very good decision this thing looks a hell of a lot better now than it did so much cleaner so much nicer um, I still have to work on three eighths inch holes because I have to now I can figure out where I want the handle to be. Um, and I'm looking at this. Now we're going to get that roughly in the middle. So this is roughly where this is going to go when I'm finished. I still have to take measurements and make my cuts on this. So I'll probably do that tomorrow because again, that's my today's my long day and I'm kind of tired. Um, but I'm looking at this going, you know, maybe I want three holes. Maybe I want three. I have a longer one than a two shorter ones. And again, I got like six linear feet of this threaded rod, so that's not an issue. And I got lots of, like I said, an entire jar of, of hex nuts. So I can do anything I want here. And I think that might be a good idea. And I'm gonna have to get the 3 8 inch uh, broaching bit out anyway, because I need to drill the holes for the handle. So it's no big deal to just make one more hole than that after I line it up. Once I figure out where I want it, I, the, I believe the line for the centering is already still there. I believe I marked that the full length because I wasn't sure where I wanted them at the time. Um, so yeah, that may work out better. But this is, looks so much faster, so much sleeker. This is going to be so pretty when I'm done. I'm really happy. Um, so let's figure out where I want the handle and then drill these holes once I get that figured out 
and then drill that hole. And I think I'm going to call that a quit. Let's call that dip go up today. I'll, I'll actually probably drill the hole in, holes in this too. I have to disassemble this whole thing. There's a lot of disassembly and assembly for this project because I want to make. I, I want to keep putting it together so I know exactly what it looks like. Um, I don't want to have. I'm trying to eliminate as many problems as possible, like not realizing the handle was not the right size for the project. Go me! Okay, let's figure out where the handle goes and then start drilling some 3 8 holes. So I put the third hole in that and I almost drilled it there. Yes, I did. I almost drilled it there, but I didn't. There's a mark on there where I was going to drill it, but I didn't. Save that one. So those three are all set for, uh, I still haven't made the spikes yet, obviously. But, um, well, actually not obviously. You don't know I didn't make the spikes, but I haven't made the spikes yet. And now I need to make, uh, tomorrow I will work on this piece, because I have to bring it in an inch in every direction, both the, this, the length and then that angle has to come in an inch as well. Um, and that still, gives, whoops, that still gives me plenty of space for, uh, for rivets here. Um, and I'm going to measure this to make sure I get this, that top section as, as snug as I can. And the same with the inside. I'll try to get the inside as snug as possible. Now those two holes in here are set and they ended up being not perfectly, not perfectly spaced, but not bad. It doesn't look bad at all. And that's where the handle is going to go on the inside. And um, it's almost exactly the size I need right now. Seriously, I don't have to really do anything in, to this other than drill a couple holes in it and I will figure out tomorrow how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to have to pin it. I don't have, know if I have a clamp deep enough to clamp, clamp it like that. I'll figure out some way to clamp it um, so that I can, I need to have it assembled so I can clamp it and mark it so I drill the holes where they need to be. I'm not going to measure it. I want to clamp it and then mark it through the, through the holes that I've already drilled. Um, that way I know for sure everything will line up correctly. Um, and then I'm going to have to drill the holes. I'll have to build some standoffs. I figure out how much of a standoff. I just may measure the handle I had and figure out that was a nice comfortable size. Figure out what that standoff distance is and make the standoffs that size. Um, obviously having to compensate for the thickness of the handle itself plus additional uh, material, a different additional rod on the outside so I can put the nut in place. And I ended up having one cap nut. I found one cap nut in my collection. So tomorrow I'm gonna have to go buy another damn cap nut. It's annoying as all heck. Because you know, they, they probably come in packs at two, so I'm gonna end up with one extra. <sighs> annoying. Um, so this is coming along. The other holes are still perfect. They still work perfectly. So those didn't have to get altered. This looks much, much better now than it did before. I am so glad I decided to make that change and come to realize that the, the handle wouldn't work, but I found a solution for that. So we're all good, but that looks so much better. Ah, I can't wait for this thing to be finished. It is gonna be so damn cool. And I actually, um, just in case the belt I picked up, um, this belt here doesn't work. Today I picked up a couple of D-rings at Walmart, they were on sale for two bucks. Uh, a couple of D-rings so I can make myself a strap because I have some webbing here already. Um, but I thought it would be kind of interesting to use that strap again with it. We're kind of doing the, you know, the, the salvage concept. So if I can use that strap, I'll use that strap. We'll see if it comes out. If it doesn't come out, like I said, we'll just make a new one. I can do that. I have this, I have this technology. So looking good, looking good. Um, I'm going to do a little picture of this and a sneak preview for my, for my Instagram. People are going to be like, what's this thing? This thing is really damn dangerous. That's what this thing is. Ah, I cannot wait until this thing is finished. I still have to do the, the I have to still have to grind points and grind edges on this. Um, or at least good sized bevels. I don't know if it's going to have actual sharp edges or sharp. The spikes in the middle will be sharp. Um, and these are going to be sharp on the end. I don't know how much I want edges on these. And again, it's really soft steel. Um, cutting this with my broaching bits was a dream. It really does cut beautifully. It's right, there, right on through. Nice chips, no problem. Um, so it wouldn't take, a, take an edge anyway. But it does take a nice point that I know from my Tiger Shield uh, uh, build. So the, uh, the Viper's uh, Kiss is well on its way. The grip is done. I have not done the permanent attachment because there will be a nut on the inside of here to hold the shaft to the top 
and there will be a nut on the inside of here to hold this in place so it's just free floating at the moment but that's what it's going to look like and it fits quite nicely i like the fact that the uh, it just happened to be that the, the way the distance is worked out that the grip is almost exactly flush with this um because this works out to two inches because that's what the handle is that i was going to use but i didn't and again i have another project for that one already pardon me so now this is done so i can take this and put it aside and not worry about it and next it's going to be uh this i've already done some calculations the calculations are is i need to take off 987 on the angle section and 875 on the straight section so my cut this thing's not as evenly trapezoidal as i thought it was because it should be the same but it's not it's okay so i'm going to take 875 off both of here and then 937 or whatever the heck that was here um i will make those cuts first that I can come in. Actually, it may be easier if I do this one first, get, the, get that out of the way, because uh, those are just straight cuts. But uh, yeah, mark them, cut them, and then I'll work on this one and make sure that you know the angle is exactly the same. And that should give me all the spacing, because it should come right up to here, as well as fit right between those two angles. So let's hope it does. Because this is a fairly complex piece and I would really prefer if I didn't have to make it all over again. Hurrah, hooray, I didn't screw it up. So now this fits in here, tighter than it did before, which is awesome. It doesn't really have any slop this way at all, back and forth. Um, so now I can uh, clamp this in place and drill the holes for the rivets right through there with a quarter inch drill bit. Uh, probably have to give a, bit, a, little, a little bit of a wiggle to make sure that there's enough room to get the rivets in. And then this piece, as far as the piece is concerned, will be complete. And this piece, as far as the complete piece is complete, finished, may be finished. I still, I'm looking at this going, I don't, I can't get two blades in the back of this thing. And I'm starting to think, do I need them? This is going to have three points in the front. And they're going to come out, the center one's going to come out to about here. And the other two are going to come out to about there. It's going to have a lot going on here. I don't think I need a blade. I think it might you might be gilding the lily. So I'm going to complete this thing. And in the event I decide that yes, in fact, I do think this needs to be, uh, need something, I will then do it. No, I'm not done. I just remembered I got to put the strap on there. Ha 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 ha. Caught myself. Caught myself. So now this is done. I can put this aside. Oh, actually, no, I'll drill the holes and I'll put it aside. Um, and then I'll worry about figure out how to get the strap on there. Because that strap's important. And then it's going to be here. And I've decided, let me get this out of the way. I've decided that I, well, I knew all along that I was, I need, going to need that. Oops, sorry. This is really cumbersome. I was going to have to clean this up so that this end was parallel to that. Because I wanted that to line up. But once I get that cut, uh, figure out what that's going to be, and I'll, I, and I'll mark that while it's still on here. I decided I don't like this. I don't like this. This is just in my way. So I'm going to probably put a 45 degree cut on here. Zunk right there. Get rid of it. And and make it look a little more, a uh, little lighter visually. Not to mention it just won't be in the way when you're, when you're trying to use it. Because this end down here is not really doing anything. Um, so let's get the strap in there. Figure out where I want it first and then figure out if I can use the strap I, I purchased or do I have to go make one from scratch. Uh, this, is, this is a very complex build for me. <laughs> so I've got the front section uh, done and this is a two two inch points and one two and a half inch point. I, I just like the way that looks. It has a, has a, it's lethal but it's got this, still got this kind of st sturdy look about it. Uh, I think it's the it's the ratio between the length and the diameter just appeals to me, and I like the points that came out. I think they came out nice. I'm in the process of realizing I couldn't use that belt I bought, and I was going to go grab my roll of webbing so I could make my own belt. When I discovered I had a belt, it was on the shelf. I did forgot I had it, so I cut two holes in it because those two holes are going to correspond to those two holes right there. Um, that's going to be where I put the rivets through, and I'm going to use. Uh, a 
quarter inch rivets on the other side, uh, washers, so I have um, this sandwich between two things, and I'm hoping I can get the, get the uh, whole thing to come together. I'm not going to be able to use uh, rivets on that one, I don't think. I just don't think I can pull it off. I don't think I can get a rivet to go through the aluminum, the belt, and the washer, and pull it together the way I want to. So I think I'm just gonna bolt those together. That's not a big deal. I've got lots of bolts. I've got lots of quarter inch nuts. Everything will be fine. And I'll still be using those to sandwich the whole thing together when I'm finished. But those are just inside, just inside the steel uh, side pieces. And the steel side pieces have been, um, have been, uh, and you put an angle in there to clean them up a little. And uh, this angle right here is also been taken care of, and I've deburred the out, uh, deburred everything that needed to be deburred. And these are all, both of these are now all sharpened up. Uh, one of them did come out slightly better than the other, and that's just the, because again, I'm doing all this stuff essentially freehand, so sometimes things don't come out perfectly symmetrical. If I had a machine, if I was using a milling machine, it'd be a different matter, but I'm not. Um, so now, it. I don't think I've got anything left to do but final assembly. So let's give it a shot. Let's see if I can get this whole thing to come together and be done. That would be really, really cool. And there she is. And I'm glad I didn't go with the blade because I really think that would have, like I said, been gilding the lily. Um, and fortunately I had some uh, cap nuts, so I was able to use cap nuts on these two bolts uh, to give the, this mirrored image to this because I uh, I would have want, would have been kind of a juxtaposition between cap nuts and, and regular hex nuts. So now I've got the, the both there, which I think is a nice nice accent. And uh, this thing is just, just awesome. And I, just because it's my favorite color, I wrapped the handle in purple. Um, and it's very comfortable. It really is. I set this up so that the this section's in here. So I think that I think the, it feels better to me when I have the the section that's under the wrapping here, as opposed to having it on the on, in the swell and and against the palm. I feel it's I, more comfortable for me there. Uh, lots of clearance, so there's no there's no clearance. There's no issues with that. Um, and uh, I'm very happy with this. So I'm going to. Uh, do one more section of video. I'm going to put this thing on. I can't really do it with one hand. Um, and then I will do a, show you what it looks like. And then it's time for some stills. So let me go jump ahead right now. And there we go. Looks like on the arm. Looks like that. And it, it really is nice. It really, really is a, a good fit. I'm glad I went with the narrower. Um, build. It's just a little bit wider than my forearm and a little bit wider than my fist, so it looks more like an extension of who I am um, as opposed to that larger thing it would have been um, otherwise. So yeah, I'm really, really thrilled with this build. This this thing, the, the, the Viper's Kiss, has really come out uh, beautifully, and I, I am excited. So now I'm going to go take some stills uh, for this video and for my Instagram and my DeviantArt page. Um, and if you do not follow me there, you should, because I post all of the uh, weapon pics and DeviantArt and the Instagram. I post all kinds of different things I, I do, including cute cat pics and the things I find that end up in these videos, like the, the, the salvage uh, scores I get. Because some of this you're looking at right here is almost all salvaged. The threaded rods were salvaged, the steel was salvaged, the aluminum was salvaged, the uh, nuts were and the bar were not. The belt was really inexpensive. It was a buck. Um, so yeah, awesome. Really happy. So this has been the Viper's Kiss. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I hope that you'll come back for the next one.